Make the circle, make the circle. Get him up, let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. Oops. Now, little boy, why would you do that? I, I, I don't know. Oops. Boy, what is wrong with you? I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oops. Why would you do that? I, and what I don't is know. in your mouth? But Nothing. give it to me right now. Get So I don't know if liberals realize that Republicans are constantly speaking to each other in code out in public. This is exactly like when my blind cat thinks that she's sneaking, when what she's really doing is just moving very slowly across the middle of the living room while all of us watch her every movement. Most of these characters are black. Please, you're gonna tell me Sesame Street is not in the hood. Looking just like the set of Everybody Hates Chris. Y'all are not fooling me. First, we have Big Bird with the curly high top fade. He remind me of one of those big and tall boys that never wanted to play ball because they got bad knees. A little something like this, and no, I'm not saying he looks like Big Bird. Next up is Cookie Monster. I can't go into too much detail about Cookie Monster, but just think about your friendly neighborhood cookie plug. Oscar the Grouch, black. He reminds me of that dude you always see at the gas station. You know they not homeless, they just stay at the gas station. He's low-key grouchy, but everybody talks to him because he stay at the gas station. Kermit the Frog. Black. This man was born in the swamps of Louisiana. Look it up. If you couldn't tell from the facial expressions he makes, you could really tell by the way he can't stay away from his ex. One thing about Kermit, he do not play about Miss Piggy. Speaking of Miss Piggy, this is a light-skinned black woman. Please, I know you see that 13 by 6 blonde bust down lace front and them 25 meter lashes. They that one couple we all know that's horrible for each other but can't stay away. Elmo, black. Aside from the fact that Elmo will say anything to anybody, he also has real life beef with a rock. This rocker will never be able to float. Oh well, too bad. Bye, rocker. Dylan Mulvaney, the trans person who brought down Bud Light, has now come out as a lesbian. So let me get this straight. He started as a man, he transitioned to a woman, now she is a lesbian. Yeah, pretty much. Makeup mistakes elegant ladies never make. Wear brown lipstick with gloss on top of it or lining your lips in a dark lip liner. I saw ladies using contouring to contour their lips, hoping to achieve an effect of larger lips. It looks ridiculous. Say what you really want to say. Just spit it out and say it. I don't have a problem with femininity or elegance content, but as a non-dark skin person, you are the wrong person for this particular tip. And I've been doing makeup for a very long time. So while you may be the expert at that one thing, unfortunately, you're going to have to learn from me on this one. And perhaps you can use some of this advice to tweak your future curriculum. And I do see that you follow me, so I'm gonna explain to you why that particular tip was not received well by people who look like me in your comment section on that video. For dark skin people, wearing a dark brown lip pencil is literally the only way to get most lip colors to be flattering on our complexion. Like, there's just no way around it. Now, there's also levels to it. Obviously, the look can go from more extreme to more subtle, but either way, it is a thing. Most of us are just not all one skin color, especially on our face. For example, I have pigmented lips. It's just normal. Have you ever seen someone with dark skin trying to wear like a nude or like a peachy or like a pale pink lip color but around the perimeter it looks ashy that's what happens when you don't know how to do a trend to suit your complexion now I quite literally literally made a career out of doing that showing brown girls how to do that but for us. I'm not an elegance expert, but I do know a thing or two about being in an industry that was always quicker to say, that don't work on your complexion, this looks tacky on you, this looks ridiculous, versus what they should have been doing is saying, here's a brush, I'm gonna show you how to do this on your skin tone. You need to be super careful in the future about using blanket statements, like not elegant, ridiculous, when talking about beauty rituals that are specific to a particular culture. And for whatever reason, if you just did not know that the brown lip liner thing was connected to most brown girls' beauty routines, then it sounds like you have some rewriting to do. Thank you and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bitch, I said what I said. I'd rather be famous instead. I let all that get to my head. I don't care, I paint the town red.
Welcome to Game Developers from Hell, where today we're going to be talking about a game developer for a game that's so wholesome, it's crazy that we have to discuss him. However, if you're familiar with some of the anti-Semitic tropes within Minecraft, this may not surprise you. The developer of Minecraft, who is known as Notch, is so infamous that not only has the game removed all mentions of him, but he's not welcome to the 10th anniversary. But what did Notch do? What didn't he do? It ranges all the way from him talking about something that he clearly doesn't understand, such as vaccines, to referring to Zoe Quinn, the main victim of Gamergate, as a fucking cunt, saying that if you're against the concept of heterosexual pride day, you deserve to be bang. And of course, bigots always find a way to take pot shots at my trans sisters. Notch is completely unapologetic for all of his behavior and seems to be hailed as one of the kings of bigotry on the platform Twitter. This is just scratching the surface though. I could probably make a part two on Notch if anyone is interested. I would never let you in my VIP. We are enemies. We are foes. Who are you? And what are those? You are gross. I know to be a transphobe, you have to be kind of lacking any form of critical thinking, but this one really got me. Pureleaf announces $400,000 in personal use grants for moms and those who identify as moms. Now, someone whose prefrontal cortex is on the right track to fully develop will probably look at that and go, oh, anyone who is either like the sole provider of a kid or has a lot of responsibility over a child who didn't birth the child, but like still takes care of them. Because guardians exist. The grandma to baby. There's an older sibling out there right now who is like going through the process of having to adopt their siblings due to some horrible tragedy, unfortunately. Guess what? They'd probably be eligible for this grant. But see, that's someone with common sense and we expect too much of transphobes. Because I go to the comment section and literally every, per if not like every single comment, every other comment was like, oh, we can just identify as moms now. Or like, what do you mean identify as a mom? I had to go through pregnancies. Like, I hate to tell you this, I hate to tell you this, but there are moms that never got pregnant. <gasps> Wait till they hear about adoption, like, they're gonna lose their fucking minds. But yeah, like, the way that women were bringing up pregnancy as, like, the way to be a mother. Oh, y'all have lost the plot. Y'all have lost the plot. So that's, like, the first genre of comment, right? It's like, oh my god, I had to go through a pregnancy. Um, if you never went through a pregnancy, sorry, but you're not a mother. Like, sorry, but if you don't have a uterus, uh, you don't get to claim to be a mother. Like, are you dumb? Then there was a second genre of these comments. Basically the same people who are like, oh, I can identify as an attack helicopter, so I get to identify as a mom. Like, oh, you are not using any of the brain capacity, what little you have. Like, don't piss me off. And then, like I said, like it was probably every other comment because they're the smart people who were like, y'all, let's use our brains and our minds. But like when I tell you these people will literally make something about an agenda when it's not, like they are just trying to provide money to people who need it. And these people have taken that and they're like, um, actually, y'all just want to transform into like whatever you want. You want the privilege. Of what are you yapping about? Like what? Sorry, but this one was so stupid to me because it takes like two brain cells to figure out what they're talking about. It did not take that much brain power. And the fact that people were like flipping it and reversing it to be something else is like, what? What? I actually went through the trials and tribulations of pregnancy, so that's the only way you can be a mother. Silence yourself. You are reducing yourself to an organ. How do you feel? Like, you, you literally are calling yourself worthless outside of having a certain organ. You don't do anything else to be a mother besides having birthed those children? Probably not, actually, because of the way you're acting. Like, what? Get it together. It's making me sick. I decided to do what any other drag queen would do at a show like this, and I'm gonna give a PowerPoint presentation. Is that okay? <laughs> On TV characters that you didn't know were black! Now, how does a character qualify for this list? Well, it's two very simple rules. One, it has to be surprising to a majority of people that the character is black. And two, the character must be fictional. I'm not gonna be like, did you know that Kit Connor from Heartstopper is actually not my jerk? No. The real first one is Janice from the Muppets. Okay. Now, Oh, you think that's yarn? Those are micro locks for me, okay? She's wearing a protective style, but she still wants something that she can swish around. And the reason that her eyes are always closed is because if she ever opened them, she would have eyes brighter than the blue sky, and she would give you a lethal light skin stare, okay? Now, you're probably wondering, Avery, what is the light skin stare? Well, I'll tell you. The light skin stare is a seductive stare most commonly given by black 
light-skinned black men. Fun fact, the light-skinned stare kills more people per year than shark attacks. It's true. If a light-skinned man is rizzing you up, call an ambulance. <laughs> Second is Skyler. I have an uncle that looks just like this, and so do you. His name is Rick, he has a mild heart condition, and he is a Republican that votes against his own interests. Okay. Third, all of the backyardigans. Uniqua, we already heard that because black. Her name is fucking Uniqua, okay? Now Tyrone is a first generation American. Both of his parents are from Jamaica. He speaks fluent patois. Tasha is my fashion girl. Her mother is the regional manager at Rainbow, and she gets all of the hottest pickings. She is the only backyardigan that has both gotten into and won multiple fights, okay? Also, she is gonna grow to be flat a boss. That's the girl on TikTok that goes, Hello, Christ. I'm not just kidding. After her, she makes it to the RuPaul's Drag Race finale, and they say, what would you say to four-year-old flat a boss in this photo? Next slide. Pablo's Dominican. Next slide. Austin. He is the founder. Founder of the Light Skin Stare. This child has the Light Skin Stare. You're probably wondering, what is the Light Skin Stare? Now, the Light Skin Stare. It kills more people per year than Tyler Perry movies. It's true. You're probably wondering, Avery Goodman, who is the fourth character on your list? Next slide. It's you. Every single one of you is black. Now this may be a surprise to some of you, but it should be a surprise to all of you. If you remember, there were two rules. There were two things that were necessary for you to make this list. One, that be surprising to a majority of people that you're black. But the other one is that you have to be a fictional character. None of you are real. You are all figments of my imagination from my big, juicy, feminine brain. And when I get off this stage, you will all cease to exist, okay? I win. I couldn't stitch this video without the really like a loud, obnoxious Taylor Swift music playing. Um, it is, as an adult, really interesting to see how many things that are considered to be good etiquette just make um, life easier for those in spaces where etiquette is super relevant and harder for those who are in the working class. And I think you just, you know, you can read the comments and go, Oh, servers are saying that makes my life easier. Why would I do that? Anyway, you know, tax the rich, it's a job. You're wearing makeup. So are you. But you're a man. It's official, I'm finally one year on testosterone. And because of that, I'm going to warn you about all the things that I wasn't warned about. Warning, these are gonna get progressively less safe for work. Starting off, nice and simple, your taste changes. A lot of the time on testosterone, your taste preference is going to move away from sweet and towards savory. You're going to start craving more protein, which makes a lot of sense. Now I know we're all aware you get hairier. However, I wasn't prepared for what that means. It means forbidden tickle. The forbidden, it's a spider, it's a, it's a bug, it's a slap it. Uh, that sensation's gonna start happening in a lot of places. Facial hair is, makes me wanna punch myself in the face. This is one of the funniest to me, given the whole pain Olympics that men tend to do, but your pain tolerance goes down. I'ma say that again, your pain tolerance goes down. Especially if it's like a stinging or pinching sensation. However, if you have chronic pain, like I also do, and it's joint related, then having muscles that are easier to grow, even just passively, reinforcing all of your joints makes the chronic pain go down. I know we can all assume it'll affect your period, your hormone cycle in general. However, if you have something like PMDD, like I do, it also affects that quite a bit. You change your dose and stuff, it could bring about a hellish period nightmare, uh, but just hang in there, because over time it should make everything calm the hell down. I know a lot of people get insecure about voice cracks, but voice cracks are hilarious. They're so funny, especially if you can use them for comedic timing or emphasis. 
is a lot of fun. Just don't hurt your voice, especially a big warning for not hurting your voice. You have to train your customer service voice to come down. It's really weird, but if your default is to always talk up here when you're trying to be polite, you will hurt yourself as your voice gains the ability to go deeper ranges. So be careful and train. Now I know most people talk about the whole getting more acne, which for sure Z's is a thing. However, it's not just the acne about your skin that's changing. Your skin itself, the quality of your skin is changing. Your pores are getting bigger, the skin is getting rougher and thicker. And that takes some adjusting. Prepare to be warmer. You're likely to get hot flashes. Your temperature in general, you're going to feel a lot warmer. That also does mean you get sweatier. Also a lot oilier. Now with the whole getting sweatier, you also get uh, smellier. However, smellier does not mean stinkier, or at least not bad. I find that I actually smell better to myself a lot of the time, and I've gotten more compliments from other people about my natural smell. So, hey, it's not always bad. Thinking of smell, by the way, what I was definitely not prepared for. Uh, moving on to the juncular region, it's gonna start smelling like the opposite set. The opposite set of, set of genitalia. Yeah, yeah, the smell is a little distinct, meaning one way or the direction, uh, other direction, but uh, that, the, all of the smells change, all of them. And they all start to smell a little bit like male stereotype. Continuing with the drunk juncular region, you're going to have to relearn how to jerk off. Sorry, bud. It's gonna change how things work. Good luck. By far the weirdest, which is why I saved it for last, is you grow a grundle. Now, if you're not familiar with the fleshy fun bridge, the uh, area between one set of genital and the, the hole that does the other operations, um, there's a little pouch kind of of fat or pudge uh, that, that, that'll that grow, kind of changing the shape of not just one, but several areas down there. Good to know. Good luck to anyone who's interested in out there, and I'll see you in the comments, I'm pretty sure. If you truly believe that sexism is a thing of the past, let me show you some comments I got this week. So I posted this video and it says, remembering when I spent an hour to teach a man who made more than me how to make an Outlook meeting. Nowhere in the caption, nowhere in the comments, nowhere on the screen did I say that this man was older than me. I did not give any indication of what he did. My favorite was, he has bigger fish to fry like keeping the company going. As if every man is the CEO and every woman is his assistant and those are the only two jobs that we can have. Then this person said, do you think a meeting invite deserves more pay? And I said, I think we should get paid the same if we have the same job. And then he said, he has much more experience than you. I didn't say that anywhere. <laughs> well, he has a business to run. This was news to me because we work in an organization with 30,000 plus people and uh, neither of us are running the business. I am so tempted to post this again, but swap out a man with a woman just to see what the comments would look like that time. Is the government not providing us with health insurance? I mean, what is this? Like some kind of socialist country or some kind of communist dictatorship? This I is un-American. What are we doing outside again? Conservatives are raging at the concept of walkable, easy to traverse cities where everything that you could ever need is 15 minutes away. Not only is this urban planning concept convenient, but it's also safer and more humane than your average city because problems like food deserts, absence of healthcare facilities, and dangerous high volume traffic intersections are essentially erased if these are properly executed. But conservatives find insane and cryptic ways to hate everything that is good and helpful and are bashing this concept online. Their argument is that this is an authoritarian concept and the state is going to create labor colonies, market them as 15 minute cities, and no one would be allowed to leave them. If this sounds like a conspiracy theory, that is because it is. These people have turned into sleeper agents who fight for the cause of the automobile industry and big oil. They just think cars represent freedom, which is funny because they don't, but cars would still be allowed in 15 minute cities. You would just have a choice. God forbid there be democracy and convenience in transportation. I wanna eat that. You're a witch. They usually are.
Y'all, POTS is such a nonsense fucking condition. Like, we do not acknowledge that enough. Because I'll find myself being like, okay, I'm leaving the house, so I need to pack my bag. You know, I need to have all the things I might need on me, you know, because POTS is a, is a real condition that generally impacts me and my functioning on a daily basis. And if my symptoms are to flare, like, what might I need, you know? What, what, what kind of I need first aid-wise? And it's a fucking pickle. That, that is my medical equipment. It is a fucking cucumber in a bag. This is, this is what stands between me and my body lifelessly falling to the ground. Are you, are you so serious? White people are not allowed to compliment minorities anymore. I'm pretty curled. Can you please not talk about when I switch up my hair? I, I know, but like as a black person, it's to me, it feels like a microaggression. I've seen a lot of people misinterpret this woman's video because she's not saying that white people can never compliment people of color. She's saying that certain comments, even if they sound complimentary, sometimes have racist undertones. If you watch the whole video, she makes it very clear that she's accepting the compliment and appreciates it, but doesn't like the way that this other presumably white person is phrasing it. I'm just saying, I'm telling you how it makes me feel. Everyone's different. But personally, if you like there, go oh, pretty here. You don't have to like clarify that it was different each and every time because it makes me uncomfortable. What made her uncomfortable wasn't the compliment, it was the specificity of the comment about how she changed her hair up, which is something that a lot of black women do. So to have that constantly commented on, feels like it has racial undertones to it. It reminds me of when people encounter me and it's like the first time they've met a gay person and they're like, yas queen, slay, you look sickening, sis, go off, do you like RuPaul? And those comments might seem very harmless and positive and some gay people might take no offense to them, but for me, constantly hearing those phrases is like, okay, I get it, I'm, I'm gay, thank you for your support, you don't have to yas queen me every time I walk into a room. I once met a woman who within two minutes of talking to her asked me whether I was a top or a bottom. And for some people they might think, that's just a question, isn't she? allowed to ask that straight people can't ask gay people anything anymore you can ask questions but not within two minutes of meeting someone and asking a very personal invasive question videos like this are putting white fragility over black people's feelings acting like white people can't compliment people of color based off one video the creator even said in that video this is how i feel everyone feels differently she interpreted that encounter as a microaggression some other black woman might not have but we have to acknowledge that that is how she felt and that's what she was sharing she wasn't making some grand statement about all white people and their relations with black people she was just sharing a personal moment of strength and setting boundaries for herself and i commend her for that it feels like a microaggression i deal with it all the time at work and you can make that face and it uh it's a hard knock life but that darn white fragility i tell you what yes that darn white fragility as you demonstrated by making this video this whole video screams of white fragility placing a white person's right to compliment someone else just because it makes them feel good over a black person's feelings that is peak white fragility a compliment is designed to make the other person feel good not to make you feel good because you're being nice to someone else complimenting someone else is about making that person feel good and flattering them not about about yourself and making yourself feel good because oh you are nice to someone else we don't get to dictate how someone else receives our compliments and if they don't take it in the way that we intended maybe we have to reword it and that's all that this woman was advocating for